It's a very important time for the Census Bureau. What kinds of maps do you make? We make all kinds of maps. Awesome. It's a project we're working on right now. No one has seen it yet. That's all correct. <laughs> you made it just in time. Welcome to Mission Census, a virtual field trip with the U.S. Census Bureau. I'm Steve Dillingham. And I'm Jennifer Kim. I'm so glad you could join us today on a very special quest to gather data and information about the 2020 Census. We'll explore what the Census is, how data is collected and used, and how the Census shapes your future. Is everyone ready? Yeah! yeah. Great! Let's find out about our two teams. Team Shape Your Future? I'm Kayla and I'm in 6th grade. And I'm Elijah and I'm in 12th grade. Welcome, Kayla and Elijah. Team Shape Your Future. And let's meet Team Everyone Counts. I'm Annalise, and I'm in 10th grade. And I'm Royce, and I'm in 4th grade. OK, Annalise, Royce, Team Everyone Counts, welcome. And don't forget, all of you are part of the mission, too. Pay close attention, because there's a special quiz at the end. OK, I'll leave you all to it. Good luck with your mission. OK, gather around. Before we set off on our mission, can anyone tell me what the census is? A count of all the people in the United States? That's right. The count is mandated by the Constitution, and we refer to it as the decennial census because it's completed every 10 years. That's a lot of people. How do you count all of them? That's a great question. Each home in the country receives an invitation to respond to the census online, by phone, or by mail. Do you have to fill it out? Yes. Census participation is required by law, and everyone who works here takes an oath to keep responses secret. We use the data collected, but all the information is never released. Any other questions? I have one. What do you do with all the information from the census? You'll explore more about that on your mission, but the count helps determine how many seats each state will have in the House of Representatives, and decisions about how money is spent in communities for schools, roads, hospitals, and other resources. <laughs> wow, that is an important job. How do you make sure everyone gets counted? Sounds like a big job, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, when the adults in your home fill out the census, they should count everyone who lives with you, including friends and family and anyone who is renting space in the home. Where there are more people, there are more needs. So if anyone is missed, communities can miss out on money for important resources you rely on every day, like school lunches, after school programs, and classroom technology. So make sure you encourage the adults in your home to fill it out. How many of you like to go to the library? I do. I like to go to the library to study. Me and my family go there every week. That's great. Libraries are awesome neighborhood resources that provide access to books as well as enrichment programs, story times, and classes. You know, without an accurate count from the census, libraries might not get the money they need to operate and serve the community. That's just one example of how census data can be used. Wow, I've never thought about that before. See, it really does shape your future. <laughs> Now that you know more about the 2020 Census and why it's important, I think you're prepared to go forth on your missions. Let's do it! Yeah. Team Shape Your Future. Seek out members of our data visualization team to learn all about how numbers come to life for everyone to see. And Team Everyone Counts. Use your sense of direction to locate the geography team to find out more about how they created the statistics in schools maps. Are you all ready? Yeah! yeah. Okay. We'll meet up again with Director Dillingham in about 10 minutes. Gather around. On the count of three, we'll shout Mission Census. One, two, three, Mission Census! Good luck, guys. We've been expecting you. You must be Annalise and Royce. And we're excited to talk to you. Hi, I'm Kevin Hawley, Chief of the Cartographic Products and Services Branch. And I'm Linda Orsini, a cartographer here. And I'm Leticia White. I'm the Chief of the Geographic Project Management Branch. Okay, well, the clock is ticking, so let's get started. So, 
What's the job of the geography team at the U.S. Census Bureau? Well, geography is central to the role of the Census Bureau. It really provides the framework for data collection, tabulation, and dissemination. We have a list of addresses of all known living quarters in the U.S., and we also have geographic areas that we collect and maintain. We can put that information together and we can associate each address with the geographic areas that it's within. For example, what state is it within, or what county, or city, or for example, congressional district or what school district is within. So the work that the Geography Division does can provide meaning and context to the statistics that the Census Bureau produces. What kind of tasks does your day typically involve? So typically my day involves reviewing schedules as well as workflows that begin the start of the development of maps as well as the deliveries. And I get to work on the map design and map production for the maps that support data collection and data dissemination. What kinds of maps do you make? Do you make maps that can be used in classrooms? Yeah, sure, we make all kinds of maps. Here's an example here of a popular distribution map. It's kind of cool, it's like as if you're looking down from space and it's nighttime and everyone has their lights on in their homes. And you can see spatial patterns, like it's more densely populated on the eastern side of the U.S. than the western side. And you can differentiate between urban areas and rural areas. On this map, each dot represents a thousand people. Wow. Here's another example. And this map really showcases the diversity of the United States. Over here on the left, we have the population by age and sex. And you can see on the left-hand side is the male population. On the right-hand side is the female population. And then we have these grouped by age groups. So you can see you have fewer people of older ages and more people in the younger ages. We produce maps that can showcase all kinds of variables like income, age, and diversity. But how do you make the maps? Actually, we make the maps digitally and on these huge sheets of paper. Yeah, let's go check out one of our plotters. Thanks, Leticia. Have fun. Bye. Bye. Whoa, this is huge. What does it do? Well, it's a plotter, really a big printer. And we use this to print our maps. And this plotter, we can print thousands and thousands of maps in a few hours. In fact, the map we're about to print is a project we're working on right now. No one has seen it yet. And we're gonna use this to make sure that our census geography is properly defined. So why is the census important? Well, it helps inform how funding is distributed to local communities for things like schools and fire departments. This was awesome. We've gathered lots of great data to give Director Dillingham. Thanks for taking the time to talk to us. Good luck with the 2020 census. Bye. Bye. There you are. I'm so glad we found you. We have lots of questions about data visualization. Can you answer them for us? Yes, I'm Jerson Vasquez. I'm a data visualization lead with the U.S. Census Bureau. And I'm Viviana Garcia, data dissemination assistant. Nice to meet you. I'm Elijah. And I'm Kayla. Nice to meet you. The clock is ticking, so let's get going. So what do you do at the Census Bureau? More and more at the Census Bureau, we're using interactive visualizations to really showcase our data and our statistics. So users can use charts, graphs, even maps to basically identify patterns, outliers, and trends in the data. What kind of tasks does your day typically involve? Well, we receive a lot of data requests, so I can go on the website, look up the data, and then format it so that the customer can actually be able to read what I'm sending them. And what we do a lot of times is we take it another step further, taking the numbers off the page and really designing different visualizations, charts, graphs, maps even, because creating these interactive visualizations really allows the data user to engage at a deeper level and to understand it better. Can you tell us more about the tools you use to visualize and analyze the data? Sure, I'd love to. Basically what you're looking at here is one of the ways on data.census.gov that we're building in some simple visualizations into the numbers we produce. For instance, the big game census is something we did around a championship game recently. Here, we decided to have some fun with it, showcasing where different players are from on each of the team rosters. Now, this builds some interest and also allows people to see different features on data population statistics. In this case, I'm hovering over to Cater, Georgia, and see the population is just over 23,000. How are you preparing for the 2020 census? Well, right now, it's a very important time for the Census Bureau. We're hiring a lot of people in the field to go out and make partnerships with community organizations, different local governments, 
to really start promoting the 2020 census. It's a big thing we do, and it's really important to resetting or updating, really, the statistical foundation of the nation for the next 10 years. Why is the census important? The census is important because it provides critical data for lawmakers, um, business owners, teachers, and many others. Every year, billions of dollars in federal funding go to hospitals, fire departments, schools, roads, and other resources. One of the main functions of the decennial count, the census is to basically provide the numbers and population totals so that the Congress of the United States can be reapportioned. So different states may lose or gain a seat in Congress according to the population totals, and that's a very essential role of the census. But other roles are just as important. Your jobs sound super cool. Thanks for talking to us. Good luck disseminating all the data from the 2020 census. It's been our pleasure, and hurry back for the quiz. Welcome back, teams. Did everyone have a good time? Yeah. Yeah. yeah! I hope you gather lots of data because Rector Dillingham has some tough questions. Okay, let's go. All right, good luck, everyone. Welcome to Census Challenge, where the brightest minds from around the country gather to test their knowledge of the 2020 Census. Today, team Shape Your Future, team Everyone Counts, and you, students, teachers, and viewers, are facing off for the ultimate prize, the knowledge of why the census matters and how it shapes your community. Teachers, this is a great time to divide your class into teams. We'll pause for a moment so you can keep score in your classrooms. Here are the rules. I'll ask a question followed by multiple choice answers. Wait until all the options have been provided before buzzing in. Okay, first question. A complete count of children in the United States is important for A, stores to stock their toy aisles, B, school funding and planning, C, candy manufacturers, D, social media. B, school funding and planning. That's right. Okay, question number two. Geography provides blank to statistical data. Is it A, meaning and context, B, mountains and streams, C, directions, or D, none of the above? A, meaning and context. Wow, you got it. Okay, on to question number three. Data visualization, or the graphical representation of information and data, includes visual elements such as A, charts, B, maps, C, graphs, or D, all of the above. All of the above. Yes, you were paying attention. Okay. Team Everyone Counts currently leads two to one. Question number four. The decennial census is mandated by A, doctors, B, the Declaration of Independence, C, the Constitution, D, federal courts. See the Constitution. That's right. Wow, it's a tie game, folks. Question number five. The Geography Department at the Census Bureau makes maps that show which characteristics? A, income, B, age, C, diversity, D, all of the above. Oh, D, all of the above. That's correct. And that pulls team everyone counts into the lead. Question number six, true or false, participation in the census is required by law. True. That's right. Team Shape Your Future ties it up again. Question number seven, according to the 2010 census, the city with the largest population in the United States was A, New York City, 
B, Washington, D.C., C, San Francisco, D, Chicago. A, New York City. Yes, you got it. Question number eight. Tasks of the data visualization team include A, knocking on doors, B, designing, C, responding to data requests, or D, B and C, designing and responding to data requests. D, B and C, designing and responding to data requests. Correct, all tied up. And this is the big moment. We've come to the final question. The census is important for informing how funds are distributed to, you tell me. Hospitals, fire departments, schools. Roads. That's all correct. I think that's a tie. Well done, teams. It looks like we're out of time, folks. That's it for our 2020 Census Challenge. Thanks so much for joining us for Mission Census, a virtual field trip to the U.S. Census Bureau. And don't forget to make sure everyone is counted and encourage your parents to fill out the census. For more information, visit census.gov forward slash schools. Bye. Bye.